Hi, this is Lewis from ndxtesting.com. Now, this video is for beginner technicians who want to learn about nerve conduction studies. Now, in this video, we're going to discuss the lower extremities nerve conduction study protocol. And so if you are at the beginner stages, and you want to learn about nerve examinations, or perhaps even if you're a patient and you want to know a little bit about the uh, NCV protocol, well, this video might be for you. Well, with that being said, let's get started. Now, please note that all the nerves you have from your hips to your toes originates from the lower back. So the lower back is like the, the fuse box of the lower extremities. Everything originates from there. And like, and like I mentioned in my previous video where we discussed the upper extremities uh, NCV protocol, the, uh, all the nerves you have from your shoulders to your fingertips originate from the neck. So the neck is like the fuse box of the upper extremities. If you want a little bit more information about that video, then I'll link it in the description. So again, so we're going to test the motor nerves. We're going to test sensory nerves. We're going to test F waves and we're going to test the H reflex. Those are the four key components that we're going to discuss in, in this video. Now we also, as far as the nerves we're going to discuss, we're going to discuss the perineal motor nerve. We're going to discuss the perineal F wave. We're going to discuss the uh, perineal or the superficial perineal sensory nerve. Uh, we're going to discuss the tibial motor nerve. Perhaps a little bit of median lateral plantars. Maybe we'll see how the video goes. I don't want to prolong the video too much. Uh, we're going to discuss F waves, tibial and perineal F waves, and then the H uh, reflex. Note too that uh, every single muscle you have in your body, you have a, a motor nerve attached to it. So when we stimulate that nerve, we're going to get a motor reflex. The same as when you go for a neurological examination, they kind of tap you in the knee and you respond. Well, with nerve examinations, uh, we're going to use electrical impulses, we're going to stimulate the nerve, and we're going to respond. We also test sensory nerves. Now, sensory nerves are responsible for touch and feel. So when you touch something hot, you have sensory receptors that will automatically tell you, move the hand even before the brain knows it. Now, obviously, if you have sensory nerve damage, that could be a problem. With a nerve examination, we'll definitely know if you have sensory neuropathy. Now, we're also going to test F waves. F waves gives us information about the proximal pathways. So if you have a problem in the lower back, let's just say maybe you had an MRI and uh, maybe you have a herniated disc or a bulging disc at the levels of maybe L4, L5, or S1, the F waves will give us in key information about those pathways. And then you have the H reflex. The H reflex specializes and give us giving electrodiagnostic information about the S1 route. So if you have a specific or the S1 route is compromised, you have an MRI and you have a, a severe herniated disc compromising the S1 route, then the H reflex will be able to tell us about the uh, S1 uh, route. Anyway, so let's get started. So usually when we start for nerve examination, remember we use electrical impulses. So I definitely encourage you to communicate that to your patient effectively. We're gonna use electrical impulses we we'll start the intensity at zero, not low, but at zero. You increase your intensity, and all you're going to do is it's use the exact amount of intensity that that patient that you're seeing needs. You're not going to use too little, and you're not going to use a lot. Some patients need a little bit. Some patients need a lot. Everyone's different. You're not there to crank up that intensity and make the things, make the electrical diagnostic examination a little bit more complicated. So we start with the perineal motor nerve. And what we do is we stimulate at the interior side of the ankle, meaning the uh, front of the ankle. So let's just say if this is the ankle and these are your, your toes, we're going to stimulate right in the middle of the, uh, of the ankle. So on the sides here, you have uh, the lateral and the medial malleolus. So when you, uh, when you see your bone structure, you have two bones on the side. One is the lateral malleolus and the other one is the medial malleolus. I mean, I'm having a hard time to pronounce all of a sudden. Common language. But that's what happens when you record, you know, you might get a little nervous, you're speaking in front of a camera. And I'm not doing much editing, I'm just gonna speak and if I make a mistake, well, it just stays that way. Okay, so we stimulate at the level of the, uh, uh, of the ankle. Again, we use very little intensity. We start low, then we increase the intensity and we use the intensity that, that patient needs for the nerves to react. So you're going to get a, uh, a, a motor reflex on the uh, toes. That's where you know you're on point, okay? So now we collect a response. 
okay we save it and then we move on to the next segment we're going to move a little bit more proximal we're going to stimulate uh, at the level of the knee now there's usually two spots where we stimulate at the level of the knee we stimulate obviously in the outer part in the lateral side there's a bone structure called the fibular head we stimulate right below that uh, that bone the nerve pretty much wraps around it or we can come up at the lateral popliteal fossa nice little heart um, hollow part right above the knee we stimulate there usually when you get a little better well usually when I when I kind of teach my uh, technicians I teach them just to get collect two responses at the ankle and at the knee whether I teach them a little bit more proximal or, or, or distal at the knee then it's my choice at that, that in, in that particular moment later on as you get better you're gonna have to learn how to diagnose perineal nerve entrapment the perineal nerve at the level of the knee it's, it's a little bit superficial it's so superficial you can make an incision and pull it out it gets compromised so when you get better then you have to uh, uh, take that nerve and study it uh, properly and you'll be able to tell if that nerve is abnormal but that's uh, a little later usually now all you want to worry about is getting two responses once you get to those two responses you measure you take a distance and you're going to calculate a velocity now at first you're going to be like what what do these nerves look like remember when we look at a nerve we look at the shape okay we look at the latency which is the speed of that particular nerve that you're testing we look at the amplitude which is the height we look at the velocity how nerves travel from or communicate from 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 point to point now the shape of the nerve it's a diaphasic response so basically is you when you stimulate the nerve and you get the full nerve potential right you have a baseline flat line then it goes up it doesn't come down and up it just goes up baseline goes up comes down and baseline again and relaxes okay so it goes up I mean baseline up comes down and relaxes and relaxes that's a diaphasic uh, response okay but your instructor will be able to tell you the uh, objective of this video is for you to have an idea of what the protocol uh, is going to be about so perineal motor nerve you stimulate distal at the ankle proximal at the knee distance calculate velocity you want to make sure you get good waves now you're going to have active reference and ground electro okay you're not you're not going to stimulate just to stimulate okay so remember when we stimulate a nerve we record from a muscle so you're going to have an active electro at the edb muscle the extensor digitorium brevis okay um uh, Usually in men, that muscle is like the size of a quarter. In women, sometimes that muscle could be diminished, but you have to be able to find it. You place the active electro there, and then the reference electro goes away from that active, a little bit more distal towards the pinky, okay? And then the ground, you can put the ground anywhere. I mean, I don't have really any, any specifications. Unless you're in a hospital, hospitals, you know, you, you get a lot of noise, so you gotta be a little bit more specific, but the ground is to be able to prevent from your waves to go all over the place. Uh, usually I put it in I always put it in different in different places okay so you stim you have the active electro at the uh, EDB muscle you got the reference electro and then you have your ground usually the active is black the reference is red and then the, uh, the ground is it's, it's green so now the F wave the F wave you're going to stimulate in the same place except you point the electrical impulses impulses towards the spine remember now you're troubleshooting the proximal pathways you want to get uh, information you're getting information about the the lower back l anywhere between l4 to uh, s1 when it comes to the uh, perineal motor but if the if the patient that you're seeing it's having an emg those f ways are going to have very little value unless there's a severe uh, situation where multiple multiple nerves are affected and the f ways would be abnormal i wouldn't worry too much about uh, the F waves just collect four or five. Um, to me, it's a little staggering. Sometimes technicians they they collect like ten. Like why collect so many? What's the purpose? What's the purpose of collecting so many different F waves? You collect four or five. You superimpose them. You put them together. You see the deflection. You label it. Your instructor will teach you, uh, show you where you have to label that F wave, and you move on. 
the doctor is not going to look at the F wave for your radiculopathy. Radicula radiculopathy means that the nerve is compromised at the level of the spine, whether it's the neck or the uh, lower back. So the EMG is a test of choice when it comes to proving if there's a nerve if the nerve root is compromised at the level of the lower back. So the F waves, you collect a few, you make it look nice and you move on. The most important thing when it comes to the nerve examinations is motor nerves and sensory nerves. H reflex, that's important too. F waves, they have very little value when it comes to, uh, now overall, in peripheral neuropathies and severe neuropathies, obviously, the F waves are going to be prolonged, abnormal. Maybe the amplitude of that nerve potential is going to be reduced. Anyway, so you got the perineal motor nerve and you got the F wave. Done. Now we're going to move towards the tibial motor nerve. Now the tibial motor nerve, remember I said you have the lateral malleolus and the medial malleolus. You want to put now, you're going to stimulate right under the medial malleolus. It's a hollow part. The instructor will, will show you exactly when you're going to stimulate, but you're going to stimulate at the inner part of the ankle. For the perineal, you stimulate in the middle of the ankle. The tibial, you stimulate at the inner part of the ankle. Okay, the active electro, active electro goes at the abductor hallucis, and the reference electro uh, goes towards the big toe. Okay, if you're using a bar electro, obviously you have to keep it a little close. And that's another thing too. If you're going to learn nerve examinations, you have to learn using different types of electrodes. And sometimes you have to switch that bar electro because you might be switch, you might be uh, testing in a place where there's a lot of noise, and that could be a problem. I know uh, a long time ago I used to work. Uh, in a hospital, interfaith hospital, years ago in the 90s, and there was a lot of noise in that uh, in that hospital, and it just occurred to me, you know what? Let me just use the uh, the bar electro, especially when it came to the sensory nerves. Without the bar, the sensory nerves were all over the place, and, and the bar was able to save me. So you got to be able to use uh, both. But anyway, so you stimulate at the level of the tibial nerve, distal to the ankle. Okay, you get a response, you save it, you're gonna get a latency, uh, and then you're gonna stimulate behind the knee. Behind the knee, you're going to stimulate at the level of the popliteal fossa. Okay? The instructor will be able to uh, go over that with you. Again, the objective of this, of this, of this uh, video is for you to have an idea about the protocol. That way, when you get in front of the instructor or when you go to class, you'll be able to understand and grasp a lot uh, faster. Again, so you measure a distance, you calculate velocity, tibial nerves are, are done. You got tibial F wave, same place. Same thing, you point the electrical impulse pulses towards the spine, you stimulate at the same place at the level of the ankle, you collect four or five, you superimpose them, put them together, don't leave them separated. It looks messy when, when technicians do that, especially when it comes to the H reflex, they collect 10 and it's all over the place. I never got to understand why they do so many, but I like to be organized when it comes to my waves and I'll show you guys how to be organized uh, as well. You want the, uh, the nerve examinations to be uh, to be look as presentable as possible. The only thing that's going to change whether they're abnormal or not is uh, the shape, amplitude, latency, but your waves have to be organized. Now we're going to discuss the um, H-reflex, okay? The H-reflex is designed to diagnose S1 pathology or S1 nerve entrapment. So sometimes in the lower back, a patient might have chronic lower back pain and it's affecting the S1 root. And how do we know that it's affecting the S1 root? Because we get an MRI and the MRI specifies that there's a problem at the S1 root. So the H reflex, lots of times, could come back positive. What happens is the shape gets affected, the amplitude might be a little bit reduced, and the, and the latency is prolonged as compared to uh, the other side. But where do you place the active electro? You place the active electro under the gastronemius muscle. The instructor will be able to show you that. Usually, uh, when you're doing that test, the patient is lying down, face down, and you're looking at the muscles, okay? Behind the knee, you're looking at those muscles. You're looking at the gastronemius muscle, face down, you put the active electro, and then you put the reference electro about five, seven centimeters from the active electro. Um, ground electro goes around the Achilles tendon and you stimulate, same place where you stimulate for the tibial motor proximal response, you stimulate at the popliteal fossa. And with the H reflex, you're going to get a triphasic response, meaning baseline kind of goes, dips a little bit, goes up, comes down, and then 
relax but your instructor is going to teach you that the objective again is to be able to know your protocol now you got the gauge reflex next you have uh, the sural sensory nerve sural sensory nerve uh, we put it uh, we're going to use a bar electro we put that electro behind the ankle okay lateral to the ankle okay uh, around the lateral above the lateral me medial uh, malleolus it's kind of a little hollow part there you put the electro there use the bar electro for that and you stimulate about 14 centimeters 10 to 17 centimeters everyone's a little different and you get a nice little uh, response you record you can save one or two whatever you like and then the superficial perineal sensory nerve usually the patient it's on oh for the sural the patient is usually on their belly lying on their belly but sometimes you can't you have to kind of improvise you'll get better as you go along uh, the most important thing is for you to familiarize you're going to test the sural sensory nerve and then you're going to study the superficial perineal sensory nerve usually that patient is lying on the back or the patient can be sitting down right in front of you okay uh, you put the active electro around the interior side of the ankle, or maybe a little bit uh, lateral, and then you stimulate about 14 centimeters. Very easy. Sural sensory, superficial perineal sensory is very easy. The only one that could get a little complicated is, is the Fennel's nerve. Uh, that will cover it more in, in the advanced protocol. And, um, and that's basically about it. That gives you an idea about the protocol. Again, so we're going to stimulate the uh, perineal motor, perineal F wave, the tibial motor, tibial F wave, okay, the H reflex, the sural sensory nerve, and the superficial perineal sensory nerve. Now, hopefully, this video has been helpful. Now, in the next video, what I want to discuss, we're probably going to summarize both upper and, and lower extremities for the for the technicians, bring it bring it all together, simplify it, and then on the next video, we're going to also discuss the the four main chief entrapment neuropathies that a technician should know. And then after that, we're probably going to discuss every neuropathy in detail, okay? Uh, so if you want to uh, receive notifications when these videos uh, are promoted and uh, done, please turn on your notifications and subscribe uh, to the channel. This is a brand new channel, so we're going to discuss a lot of uh, data, uh, a lot of information when it comes to electrodiagnostic medicine and, and, and other techniques, you know? Uh, so please subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.